Hello Internet, this is Sam Messman from We Make Movies and in this tutorial I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about the new compound clip behaviors in Final Cut 10 and what's changed and what hasn't changed and some things you probably should be aware of as you use compound clips throughout your edit. So let's get started. I've made an event called Compound Clips, and in this event, there's a bunch of clips that we'll be using in our various workflow examples. So I've just inserted three into the timeline, and I'm gonna select all three of those, and I'm gonna right click and select New Compound Clip. And what you'll see is a dialog will open up, and I'm gonna rename the compound clip to Compound Test 01 and then I'm going to select the compound clips event in the pop-up box directly beneath it even though that's already the default and I'm gonna click OK a new compound clip has been made and it's been placed into my compound clips event however what you will also notice is that it hasn't been placed into the keyword collection that I originated it from so what I'll need to do now is to find the clip I'll have to go into the event itself and sort through all of the clips to find this compound clip I've just made in the event browser however there's also a much simpler way to do this and that's by using smart collections so what I'm gonna do now is right click on my event in the event browser and select new smart collection and then I'm gonna rename that smart collection to compound clips and I'm gonna double click on the purple icon next to that smart collection and then I'm gonna go and select clip type from the filter menu and then compound clip from within that and what's gonna happen now is that's gonna change my filter settings so that all compound clips in my event show up in this smart collection so anytime I need to find a compound clip that I've made it's gonna be right there in that smart collection and all I need to do is check in there and I don't have to go dig around my event every time I make a new one. Also, I'd really recommend using this for multicam and synchronized clips as well as that's gonna have the same effect on your workflow. Anyway, some of you may remember working in previous versions of Final Cut 10, uh, certain issues you could run into using compound clips. For example, when you bladed them or put compound clips within compound clips and then bladed those, uh, you would find that your project size ballooned and your performance would become really unstable within Final Cut 10. Well in this new version you no longer have to worry about that. That's the biggest and best change to the compound clip workflow is how stable they now are. And the way Apple's done this is that in previous versions compound clips used to make a new independent clip every time you bladed a compound clip. However, now each compound clip works like a nest used to work in Final Cut 7 and any changes you make to the nest will now be reflected across all versions of the compound clip which means that when you blade it you're only blading part of a larger container as opposed to ha forcing Final Cut 10 to make a new container each time you make a new compound clip. So what I've done here is I've bladed that original compound clip we've made and now I'm going to show you um, how stable this all is now. And we're going to start by taking a look in the finder at our project file and I'm going to show you that it's going to stay relatively consistent in size as we go through here. So it says 217 kilobytes there. Now I'm going to select four of these compound clips and I'm going to remake these into another compound clip and call it compound test 2 and as you can see it makes a new compound clip there it shows up in our smart collection and now I'm going to blade this compound clip repeatedly ordinarily doing something like this in previous versions of Final Cut 10 would have driven the application crazy as you'll see in a moment our project size remains consistent and our performance remains consistent as well and now I'm going to remake this into yet another compound clip and call this compound test 3 and um, you can basically continue to do this uh, or you would never actually do this in a regular workflow however it was common at least for me to make new compound clips within compound clips and then I would always wonder why my performance would sag and my project by this point would have been probably over 100 megabytes and it's still under one megabyte at this point now. 
Now, I fast forward a little bit and I've actually gone six compound clips deep with this workflow and I can still blade and get solid playback um, going six levels deep of compound clips within compound clips and blading them. I even added some extra clips to some and recompounded and my project file is still only 360 kilobytes or so. And so basically my point here is the compound clip workflow is now stable and you should no longer be afraid to use them in your projects. Now that said, there are a couple things you should be aware of um, that the new workflow has changed and a couple workflows that previously used to work very well have been subtly affected and there's a few things you need to know about that so you can continue to work effectively in the program. So what I've done here is I've added um, a large group of clips into the timeline that I'm now going to turn into a compound clip and I'm going to call this compound test 7 and I'll click OK it's going to go into my smart collection again and what I want to show you now is how compound clips in the event browser interact with compound clips in the timeline so select I'm going to select uh, compound test 7 in the event browser and then I'm going to open it in the timeline and it's going to open up and you'll see that it is the exact same thing that I just had in my sequence that I turned into a compound clip so now I'm going to step back in the timeline and there's our compound clip again and I'm going to select that little icon on the top left of it and as you'll see it's the same thing as what was opened in the timeline from the event browser and now what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and blade this compound clip in a few areas and I'm going to show you how editing your compound clips and stepping into the timeline from within the timeline um, into those compound clips can affect other compound clips if you're not careful. So for instance I'm going to now open up uh, this compound clip at the end here and step into the timeline and you'll see the area at the end that we're currently using from this compound clip in the edit and when I step back and I'm going to do the same thing again uh, with this clip here and you'll see the part that's highlighted there reflects what's in the timeline and now what I'm going to do is step back and when I step into this compound clip here I'm going to delete a section from the tail end of this clip and I'll show you what happens to the other compound clips I've edited already into the timeline. I've left a gap clip there and now when I step back and you'll see there is now black at the end of my sequence and the reason is when you adjust anything within the compound clips it's just like you affected a nest in Final Cut 7 for Final Cut 7 users out there so if you adjust anything within the compound clip it's going to be reflected in all instances of the compound clip that you've edited in your timeline unless you duplicate your compound clip so you have to be very careful when you edit within a compound clip that it doesn't have a ripple effect in places you don't want those changes to take effect Anyway, the good news is that it's a pretty simple process to make a compound clip independent if you know how to do it. So if you go under the clip menu with a compound clip selected and go under reference new parent clip, and yes, I realize that's a really weird name for this, but so click that. And what it's going to do is it's going to make the compound clip that you select unique. So as you can see in the event browser, it's made a compound test 07 copy. And if you look in the timeline, you'll see the final cut is also renamed that clip to compound test 07 copy. And now that clip is independent. So changes that we make to this clip will not get rippled through to other instances of the compound clip that we had edited in previously. This is now its own clip and you don't need to be afraid to make changes to it. So let's go ahead and take this workflow a step further. In previous versions of Final Cut it was common to make a real based workflow using compound clips where you could set up something uh, like I've set up in this timeline which is I've made five compound clips called Reel 1, Reel 2, Reel 3, Reel 4, Reel 5. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to duplicate 
this project with those reels in it. And I'm going to right click on the project, select duplicate project, and I'm going to rename it to Rough Cut V2, and I'm going to keep duplicate project only selected. And uh, I'm going to click OK. And it's going to make a new project called Rough Cut V2 that's going to be exactly the same as our previous one. So I'm going to open that one up now. And um, what I'm going to do here is I'm going to make some changes like I would normally in a Rough Cut edit on a new version. And I'm going to step into each of these real sequences and I'm going to delete some clips and make some general adjustments overall to them. More or less reflecting the scenario where you get notes back from a producer who wants a new version of the edit and you move some scenes around and do various things. So now I'm going to step into Reel 3 and I'm going to delete some clips out of here and make a couple adjustments there and um, then I'm going to step back into the timeline and let's open up Reel 5 and make some adjustments to this. And what I want to show you is what happens when um, you make these changes and then you deliver your cut to the producer, for instance, your, your new version 2 cut. And then the client says, well, can we go take a look at our original cut? And as you're going to see in a second, if you haven't been careful with what you've done with your compound clips in um, when you make a new version, you may not actually be able to show him your original cut anymore. So let's go ahead and step back into our V1 sequence. And what you'll notice is now there's all kinds of um, black spaces. And the reason for that is because we've made adjustments to our compound clips, but we haven't made our new compound clips in our version 2 sequence independent and um, we've now lost the original cut of our film so we can't go back to it and what I want to make sure is you understand how this process works so that this doesn't happen to you because uh, it's a really easy mistake to make especially if you're used to using old versions of Final Cut 10 where compound clips were independent and changes you made to them did not ripple through to other versions of compound clips so what do you do to make sure that versions of your edits are preserved if you're using compound clips in your timeline? Well, what I've done here is I've undone all of those changes we just made in the version 2 timeline. And the first option I'll show you is to do what we did before, which is select each real clip and go up under the clip menu and select reference new parent clip. And that's going to make the clip that you've selected into an independent compound clip like I showed you earlier. However, this can be tedious and a bit time consuming and there's an easier way to do it globally. And this can be done from the project library before you even make a new version of your edit. So I'm going to select my Rough Cut V2 project and I'm going to place it in the trash and I'm going to go and restart this process again by duplicating my original version and I'm going to select the Duplicate Project and Used Clips box, and then I'm going to rename the version to V2. Now let's take a look at those uh, Duplicate Project and Used Clip settings. Now within that, you'll see an option for Multicam and Compound Clips only. And what this is going to do is make all Multicam and Compound Clips you use within a project independent. And you can select the event that you want this project to go into, I'm going to select the compound clips event and um, all you need to do is push OK and now what's going to happen is it's going to make all of the compound clips that we've used in our V1 timeline independent and as you can see in the events browser we're going to have five new compound clips added to it and it's going to be real one copy, real two copy, real three copy, real four copy, real five copy and when we step into our Rough Cut V2 project now, we're going to be working from those copied compound clips and we can now safely edit within the timeline of each of those and not have to worry that Final Cut is going to be making changes to our other versions as it's made all of the compound clips in our timeline unique. So basically the key concept when it comes to compound clips that you need to remember is that unless you make a compound clip independent, any changes you make 
to the inside of a compound clip will ripple through across to any single instance that you've used this compound clip in all of your events and projects. So as long as you remember that, everything else should take care of itself. Anyway, that's going to pretty much do it for compound clip workflow. I hope you guys got something out of this and it makes your lives as editors and colorists a little bit easier as well. And also, um, all the steps from this tutorial have been posted in the description below. And if you have any questions or things you notice that you want to add to this workflow, post them in the comment section and I'll try and get back to you. At the end of the day, the goal here is to make all of this stuff as seamless and easy as possible. And I'd love your feedback on how to make it all better. And if you watch this and it all went totally over your head or you just don't feel like doing it, well, this is what I do for a living. So feel free to hire me either to consult on your movie or to finish your film for you if that's what you need. So if you want to get in touch, just drop me an email over at sam at wemakemovies.org. And lastly, if you're wondering what this whole We Make Movies thing is, Check us out over at wemakemovies.org, or if you live in L.A. or Toronto, sign up for our newsletter, and then come to one of our events. I'll see you guys next time. And cut! <laughs>